So I'm doing this video from the office. Got a desk. Uh, music equipment up here. Computer. Another computer set right here. A computer here. A computer there. And a computer there. Um, no more nappy hairs. What have you. So. done a series of videos for people and um, of course you, if I got a video tip them a video camera you're not gonna see them no time soon so right now I'm just doing my eBay business and um, you know selling music equipment I'm gonna get rid of all my solid gold Pokemon cards this week you know, gold plated whatever I don't care but um, other than that, my stay in the house is uh, constant. I don't have any I don't feel bad with the stuff I gotta sell. All I don't. I don't feel bad. No, cause um, my time is soon. It'll be up soon. So um, my ask me is like um. Cause my hair was straight yesterday. It was like out there. What you do to your hair, man? I'm like, well, you can walk around nappy all day, or you can slick it back, or you can do something with it, or whatever you want to do. Just don't let yourself get stagnant. Is my forehead shiny because something's on it? No. Still light. Huh. That's sad. Now, the news is on like I, okay. This is also my projection. And on the other side of this room, you know, I'm a large screen. And um, there's also a TV I can see through the projector room window. So I'm looking at the TV right now. And the former Gold State Warrior, Matt Barnes, is um guess he's being arrested for domestic violence. That's not what I wanted to talk about, but you know when I see a warrior player or a former warrior player on TV, I guess my team, I gotta figure out what happened. So I guess him and his girlfriend got in an argument, and he'll probably get kicked off the Lakers now. But uh, that's somebody who has millions of dollars. Or the opportunity to get millions of dollars. I wanted to get up here, talk about perception today, but I, I can't. I just my head is looking through this window. It's kind of chilly out here. Um, I still got to do a lot of cleaning up in this room. It went from music studio, to office space, to storage for the you know office. Um, and I'm still in here with it, and I gotta produce music and videos out of the same little bitty ass room. Wouldn't be so little if I would have all this crap in here. So, what am I doing? I talked you into a circle, mentioned domestic violence. Um, once again, um, me and my uh, wife, we talked about uh, a little missing kid, Asani Campbell, out of the Bay Area. And she's like, yeah, you don't hear about that on the news anymore. Like you don't even hear about it once a month anymore. And once again, I'm going to mention Johannes Measurely because if you forget, he will walk. So people need to keep his name in the news. The fact that he murdered Oscar Grant, shot him down in the cold streets of Oakland. You know, he didn't mean to kill him, he just meant to torture him which is also illegal torturing somebody is worse than murdering them because once you kill somebody they're gone once you torture somebody it sticks in the mind no one wants to be shot for nothing nobody wants to be kicked beaten and hit with sticks for nothing and even if you got a damn good reason you have a badge your job is to protect and serve the people even the ones you have to arrest and you know incarcerate Let's go there and leave it like that because Johannes Measurely will be getting fucking 
five years probation for murdering Oscar Grant. I don't know, they might give him, give him time served because that's the game. And if you know how to play the game, you play it to win. Murder somebody and do maximum of a year, you win. Murder an innocent person on videotape, you only get a year, you kick somebody's ass. So, uh, well, let that go. Um, hmm, we got five minutes plus to go. Um, it's very interesting, the perception that people have when they believe, they feel, and they think that they know. And what do they know or they think they know? You, about you, about your life, about what you do, whatever they think they know. When you let people get close, they assume that they can guide you too. They can tell you what to do. They can somehow influence you. They can't. You only go as far as somebody lets you go until they get burned out and tired of your shit. If you get on somebody's nerves to the point to where they don't say nothing about you getting on your nerves, you've done more damage than if somebody comes out and says, you know what, you're fucking on my nerves. See what I'm saying? So when you're around the people who don't say nothing and you try to guide them, try to tell them what to do and they just look at you and don't say nothing, you're getting on their nerves. And when that volcano blows, the only person going to be hurting is you. <laughs> so, um, TV shows. There's no real new shows that are worth watching at all. There's no reality shows I want to watch because it's not reality if someone tells you what to say or tell you how to act. It's not reality if someone can uh, suggest that you carry yourself in a certain manner. Like when me and my wife was going to go on Wife Swap, all I know is delays. Is she a diva? Will she like get all up in someone's face? Will she like, ah? I said, my wife is fucking Perry Mason. She would shut his ass down. If anything, she's like Spock. Logical. Shut you down with logic. Oh. She's not like loud and outrageous and... No. Oh, and this is what bugs me the fucking most. Oh, now it just hit me all of a sudden because I've been wanting to say this for weeks. I have a friend. White guy. He's a cool dude. And we were watching Janky Promoters the other day. Then we watched... The lottery ticket. And then he says, well, why when you watch these movies, you, you have an attitude after the movie? I said, because black people don't fucking act like that. Black people don't carry themselves like that. Last night, I'm watching Meet the Browns. And all I could think is, black people do not act like that. Why in the fuck? Do I gotta see this shit on TV? I didn't like the fucking Huxtable. At all. Because black people didn't live like that when I was growing up. Some of them did. Not the ones around me. See what I'm saying? The perception of how we're supposed to be is being played out on TV. If I acted like Mr. Brown or some quote-unquote black person from TV and shit, maybe I would take this little YouTube thing to the next level. But black people do not act like that. And um, getting back to my white friend who says, oh, but it's entertainment. Like, it's not entertaining to me. See, black people manipulate to the point of vaudevillian clowns. I mean, it's like the black woman's always got to be angry, shaking it. Oh. Why did I get married too? I saw that the other day too. Real life Janet Jackson's ass would be in jail for murder. Yes. But um, 10 minutes is coming. Let's see what they're going to do. See the little thing stretched out like I might get to 15. I think I'm going to get to 15 today. So I'm just going to keep on going with what I'm doing. So black people do not carry themselves like on TV in America. 
We don't act like that. I don't act like that. And um, we don't walk around calling each other niggas all day either because I don't do that. What hurts me the most is the fact that our hip-hop type culture, put like this, black people have created an entire culture without even having anything to do with it. You understand what I'm saying? We have created this entire culture with no connection to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe you don't, but I do, so I don't care. Maybe I'm just talking to myself right now. But we don't carry ourselves like that. We don't act like that. I remember it's still I've done this video called Spaghetto. It's from my my channel Ghetto Gourmet, and I still haven't even put this video up because somebody says, You don't have no tattoos. Black people don't have shrimp all the time in the refrigerator and shit like that. I mean, some of the things that this man said after watching the big video hurt my feelings because he says it's not ghetto. A black man getting up, stomach hanging out, making spaghetti out of top ramen and shit, that's fucking ghetto. You know, it's not ghetto. You don't have no top, you don't have no tattoos, and, and you know, you're not... You're not this and you're not that. You're not ghetto, the guy says. Ghetto doesn't mean you have to act like Jack A. Harris or uh, Rerun or any, you know, no sitcom. We don't act like the sitcom abilities. And the, the, it was not like Will Smith and Bel Air. I mean, it's the, it, we don't carry ourselves like buffoonish idiots 24-7 a day. It's just not like that. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's stupid. That is what's bugging me. And I see white people head in the same direction when I watch TV. They got white people acting black, or what the perception of black is supposed to be, and white people don't act like that. Uh, it's ridiculous. We're all shown how to act, shown how to carry ourselves, and we do exactly what they tell us to do. We act just like on TV. That's why all they do is show us crime and shit all day, and at night they show us uh, you know, how to stop crime and all these crime shows and shit I watch. I mean, everything's about doing bad or being bad. And Americans are not like that. We are not like that. My last thing I need to say. The final straw. I live in the great state of California. I love the great state of California. And we have a serious election about to jump off. We need, we're getting a new governor, and this person's dreams or visions will guide us to the next shithole. Um, we have Meg Whitman and Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown is a classic figure from American history, California history. Um, Meg Whitman, she worked at eBay. Same people that's fucking me over every now and then. Every now and then there's this, this bill that pops up in the middle of the week. The middle of the month and it's like, for everything that I sold last month, how does that work? It's not right. They say Meg Whitman is going to cut a whole bunch of state employee jobs. How can you help California if you're cutting jobs? And Jerry Brown, how can you help California when you've tried four or five times before, I guess? I don't know. So it's like you bring in the old money or you bring in the new money. I can't see voting for either one of these two. But once again, just like last time, you have to go for the lesser evil. Someone's going to slash state employee jobs, outsource the rest of the country, I mean the, the, the state. Or someone who was here in the dirt, in the trenches here before, who may have failed. You've been tuned.